Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God. Lunchtime just got better. Get Fed Delights brings you a taste of Africa. Located at the redeemed Christian Church of God Compound, Lowlands, Tobago. Visit us every Friday for your authentic Nigerian cuisine, such as jollof rice, fried plantains, Nigerian stew beef, fish, and chicken, pounded yam with ikusi, moi moi, chin chin, pepper soup, and so much more. Call us 752 3660 to place your order. Lunchtime just got better. Come and get fed. Greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are welcome to Gateway to Life. I am Bridget Ogbefo. And it's such a beautiful day that the Lord has made. And I know that as I am rejoicing, you are doing the same as well. Because it is by the mercies of God that we are able to be partaker of this beautiful day. No matter what condition we may be in, I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I wouldn't say, Lord, that I want us to just pray before we go into what we have today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. I rejoice. I am glad. I am full of joy to be a part of this beautiful day that you have made. And Lord, I just want to return all the thanks and praises to your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for as many who are with me at this time listening to the sound of my voice or watching this particular program at this time. Lord, I thank you because just as you have made today beautiful, I declare that their lives will be beautiful, even through your word, even through the transmission of your word, through the help of the Spirit, of, or through the help of your Spirit. Lord, you will make their lives beautiful, as many as are watching and hearing the sound of my voice. Thank you, O oh God, for this vessel. Tobago Inspirational Network for the beautiful things that you are doing with them, through them. My Lord and my King, I pray, O oh God, that T-I-N will continue to go from height to height. They will continue to shine brighter and brighter. And your glory will be seen through them, through the programs that they are doing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm confident that you have heard me because I've prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Again, you're welcome. And so this, today we will continue from where we stop, stopped the last time. I don't know what time of the day you might be watching, might be morning, noon or night, whatever time of the day. One thing I know for sure that God is not restricted by time. He is not, he is not um, restricted by geographical location. He's just God by himself. He could reach out to one and reach out to all. So and I trust that he will do just that through his word today in the mighty name of Jesus. We started on the topic, our weapons of warfare, the last time. And we have two main text scriptures that I will want to go through again. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 4. And this is what the scripture says. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That is what the scripture says. And then our second scripture is from Matthew chapter 6. That is Matthew chapter 6. Hallelujah. From verse 5. And like I would have said last time we were here, we are taking it each verse, you know, to see what the Spirit of God would have us learn, you know, from those verses. And 
Matthew chapter 6, as I would have explained the last time, and I had admonished that we start reading from verse 1. This is Jesus that was preaching, you know, to his followers, his disciples, and by extension, the followers that came after him. And then Jesus himself started to teach the people how to pray. And you know, we're talking about the weapons of our warfare. And I told us the last time that there are various weapons that we could use as warfare. But the one we are zeroing on at this time is the weapon called prayer. And Jesus himself was here on this mount teaching the people how to pray. In what I, I know to be a template for prayer. I mean, some de denominations will recite the, you know, they call it the Lord's Prayer, and I will recite it verbatim. I don't have a problem with it, but I see it more as a template, a practical step-by-step, -step, you know, instruction on how to pray the proper way. And so last time we started off, we looked from verse 6, and I want to read again. It says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to the Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Look at verse 9. It says, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Then Jesus started giving us the step by step. And last week, I would have talked on the very first point that is noted in verse 9 of Matthew chapter 6. And it says, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, and then that brought us to the first point that I would have mentioned last week, that you have to acknowledge the position of God and the sovereignty of God in your life. He says, my Father, who art in heaven, there is no harm or no error in personalizing it. My God in heaven. You have to acknowledge the position and sovereignty of God. How do you do this? Through worship through praise, through glorifying the name of God. Why am I saying that? When you look at the next part, part you know, the, the, the C part, if you want, it says, hallowed be thy name, exalting in the name of God, lifting him up above all situations. So you must acknowledge that God is higher than whatever situation you have brought before him in prayer. You must worship him. So in my understanding of the scriptures, through the help of the Spirit of God, you cannot successfully carry out a session of prayer without actually worshiping and praising God. The Bible says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So praise, worship is like that transport. The transport that you need to go into that realm of prayer. You have to be able to worship God. I dwelt on that last time, so I wouldn't stay much on that. We're going straight to the next verse. The Bible says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This tells me that in the place of prayer, you have to intentionally let God know that you are Yes, you have your desires. Yes, you have the things you have brought to him in prayer. But you have to intentionally let God know that you are more interested in having his will done in your life. Even concerning those things that you have brought to him in prayer. He says, thy will be done in earth. 
that will be done in my life, that will be done in my situation, that will be done even in these desires that I've brought before you. You have to let God know that you are not just interested in coming before him and bombarding him with requests and just shout. Don't forget, I told us the last time that prayer is actually a communication, a two-way communication, a dialogue, not a monologue. It's not a place where you come and you just come, shout, 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 shout at God and tell him everything you want and walk away. Verse 11 says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in it. So when you pray, you are telling God, I have my desires. I have the things I'm trusting you for. But in all of this, I want your very best for me. I want your desires for me. I want what you want for me and not what I want. You know why? Because God knows the end from the beginning. God knows the beginning from the end. So those things that you are brought to him, that you are asking him for in the place of prayer, God sees the end. He knows probably the car that you are crying unto him to give to him. Oh God, I need a car. You have come, you have entered his presence, you have worshipped him, you have hallowed his name, you have done all kind of things, and now you're on your knees praying, oh God, that car. I want the car. You have told him the brand. You have told him the exact thing you want. You even told him the color. You even told him how you want it to come. You have told God everything. But God knows that that same vehicle, when you get it in six months time, your enemy will die in that same vehicle. I don't want to say you. God knows that there will be a crash that you will not escape. And so God, thy will, God's will, is that he wants you to live long. He wants you to fulfill purpose. He wants you to fulfill destiny. And so while you are coming to him with your will in the place of prayer, <laughs> verse 11 says, verse 10 says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The will of God at that time for you is not to have that car. You see why you have to depend on his will? Because sometimes, the Bible made us to know that there's something called the permissive will of God. He will allow it after you have pressurized him. After you have spoken and spoken and spoken and spoken. God may allow it, but what is the end of it thereof? So dear children of God, you're hearing the sound of my voice wherever you are, in the place of prayer, what this verse 10 is telling us, seek the will of God rather than your will. I have so many examples. God knows the end from the beginning. So what you strongly desire might be a potential source of destruction. And because God loves you, and he sees your heart genuinely, you have told him, Lord, I want your will. He may delay it. He may suspend it. Oh, he may outrightly not allow it come your way because he knows that that might end up to be your destruction. There are many people who end up in jobs because they did not go with this template. They did not emphasize and genuinely tell God that it will be done. There are people who have accepted job offers, very juicy, attractive job offers, very, very, very um, quote and unquote lucrative jobs who ended up ruining themselves, losing everything because of that job. I've seen people gone to jail because of the job that they took, even though they don't know anything about it. They don't know anything about the crime committed. But because they accepted a job offer while carrying out their job legitimately, they got indicted one way or the other, ended up in jail. Thy will be done. 
What I ask people, when you pray that prayer, it's a two-edged sword, you know. If you are telling God that it will be done in earth as it is in heaven, are you willing to let down your will and pick up the will of God? A songwriter says, my will is enthroned in your will. Are you ready to give up your desires to pick up that of God? I've seen people who have at, 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 at a point more than one job offer and one looked a lot more attractive than the other. And they come, they say, sister, join me in prayer and all that. And then after a time of prayer, God says, go for the other one, the one that looks less attractive. The one that had the um, less pay package. And God says, go for that. As a human being, that don't make sense. I have two. I've been given the offer already. The choice is now mine to pick what I want. God's ways are not our ways. The thing that God terms to be beautiful are not things that we see as beautiful all the time. You know why? Because we are mere mortals. So when you pray that prayer in the place of prayer, Bible is saying, you are telling God, exchange my human desires for your own will. Let the spiritual supersede the physical. Thy kingdom come. Rearrange my life. In other words, that's what you are saying. That's what the scripture is saying you should do in the place of prayer. Take away my desires because I know in part, I see in part, you are the all-knowing God. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who sees all and in all, who knows men in and out. Bible says that the heart of kings are in the hands of God. He can turn it in whichever way he will it. And so you go to God in prayer and say, let my will be taken away, but your will be done. In other words, I submit. Ah, I submit to you, Lord. People have handed in jail, like I said, because of the jobs they did. People's destinies have been derailed for picking the wrong spouses. Dear people of God, you may be hearing me wherever you are, and right now you are in the midst of that mess already. Because when you go to God in prayer, what you and I do most of the time is that we just go to inform God what we want to do. We, we, we inform him and we claim we have prayed about it. Oh Lord, you see Angelica, I love her, I want to marry her. Lord, make everything work well, let it go well. When I propose to her, let her say yes, let everything fall in place, provide money for me and everything. You know you are informing God what you want to do, you are just expecting him to rub a stamp it. You have not gone to God, Father. As a human being, my senses are attracting me towards this lady. What do you think? How do you see it? Which way to go? Thy will be done. What do I do? Do I go after her? Do I speak to her? And then God says, Tarry. Take more time. Spend more time with me. I want to show you certain things. Yes, Father. Thy will be done. Submitting your will to her will. But in most cases, that's not what happens. You and I make that hasty decision. And you just see it. Oh, she looks good. I like her. I like him. Oh, Lord, bless it. Make a way. Make, that's the prayer you are praying. You've gone into fasting, all kind of fasting, white fasting, dry fasting, green fasting, all kind of fasting. You have gone into fasting tell, just for him to approve your own desire. But that ought not so to be. Because according to the template that our Lord Jesus Christ gave us, he says, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So in other words, you are telling God, I want your will done. There are many destinies that have been destroyed for marrying the wrong spouses. I've seen people who have gone down the drain ministerially because they married a mismatch. They married somebody who does not believe in their ministry. 
God is not an author of confusion. God will not call you into a ministry and then give you a spouse that will counter the assignment that he had given to you. God will not call you into a particular job and give you a spouse that will be poking holes in your bag. God is not an author of confusion. He will make everything work together, you know, synergistically. He will make everything work together for your good. But my question is, are you following the template? Are you, are you, are you in truth asking God that his will be done in your life, in your situation? Somebody is listening to me out there at this moment. You are the verge of making a decision. I don't know if it has to do with marriage. Hear the voice of the Lord today. Go to the Lord and ask him to take your will and let his will be done. And may I quickly remind you, a lot of the times, God's will may not look appealing. But in the end, it will make sense. In the end, the beauty will come out. God's will does not always look attractive. God's will does not always look the better way. But I have come to tell you that in the end, all things will work together for good. In the end, the beauty will ooze out. In the end, the glory of God will shine forth. Once God is involved in it, thy will be done. In it, as it is in heaven, let your very best happen in my life. That's what you do in the place of prayer. So as you are commun commun communicating with God, as you are communing with God, Lord, I have this offer. Lord, I just got this admission. Father, let me know what is your will. Do I pursue like David? Do I overtake? Do I go out? Let me tell you, David was a man of skills. He knew what to do. He knew how to pursue, run after the enemy. But as pressing and as sad and as angry as David was, he didn't act on impulse. He still went to God. He said, God, what do I do? These people have come. They have invaded the land. They have carted all our goods away. What do I do? Do I pursue? To the human mind, it don't make sense. In fact, in this young generation, David would have been described as a bot. They would say he doesn't know what he's doing. How could you be asking if you should run, if you should overtake, if you should, you should run, be smart. David would have been seen as not being smart. But the smartest thing you could ever do, my dear brothers and sisters, is to ask that the will of God be done. Many a times, when you are walking in the will of God, you may be seen as slow, you may be seen as laid back, you may be seen as not smart, you may be seen as stupid and foolish, but hang on, my dear brother. Go by the template, it says, let your kingdom come, let your will be done, as it is in heaven. People lost their lives for choosing the wrong property to buy, the wrong property to own, even the wrong place, rented apartment to live in. Have you asked God for his will to be done? You just see the facilities, oh, this is lovely, very well laid out, good spacious rooms and everything. Do you know what covenant has been operating on that land? Do you know what has been going on in that apartment? That will be done. I always have a testimony, you know. There was a time we, we as a family, we, we were going to change our accommodation. And then we went hunting, you know, looking for a space. And then somebody talked to me about this particular space and we got to the place, oh, the place looked nice, just what I wanted. Very nice, very, very nice. When I tell you nice, had this nice sea view and everything was looking so beautiful had my money at, at hand, but something just kept holding me back. And then my husband said, you know what? Um, I don't have a problem. You are the one to make the decision if you want us to move in and all that. 
So I said, I don't know, for some reason I'm having this honk in my spirit. I, I don't know. I like the place and, and we have been hunting for a long time. And then my husband said, well, if you are feeling that way, I would suggest that we pray about it because I know you. Something you like, you wouldn't want to waste time. You want to go. And we took time and then we prayed. And I heard it very clearly in my spirit. The Spirit of God said, no. And then I began to wonder, how do I tell? Because we had told them, keep the place we were coming, you know, the, in two days' time to make the down payment and all that. And then I said, God, it is not your will. Just make everything fall in place. Let it not be difficult for me to pass the message across, you know. And then we went. Everything just went well. I told the lady, I said, I'm sorry. I don't usually behave like that. But for some reason, um, I don't think we won the plan. She just took it very well and... You know what I found out? Months down the line, that environment was an environment infested with drug dealers. And this is me with little children growing up. That would have been a disastrous environment for me to have my children in. I didn't see it. I only saw the glamour, the beauty, the nice space, the everything. But God who sees the end from the beginning knew that this would not be a good environment for you. As a matter of fact, when I made inquiries later, I found that from time to time, they will have people come there and they raid the place. You hear gunshots sometimes. I said, what? That is what God can do. Mine may be an apartment I was seeking to live in. I don't know what yours is. It could be a job. It could be, it could be a property you want to buy. It could be a spouse you want to marry. Let your will be done. Go to God. Don't just get carried away by the physical appearance and the beauty that you see and the outward good looking appearance. You may be dealing with a sepulchre. You know what the Bible says about sepulchre? I love to refer to that scripture. If you know me and you will know, (laughs) I love to refer to that, refer to that scripture. Sepulchre, the outside is very well adorned. We're talking about the grave, well adorned with nice stones on top of it. And I went for a funeral recently and nice, you know, bouquet of flowers everywhere. But inside, the Bible says it's filled with rotten bones. Seek for the will of God, my dear brothers and sisters. I will stop here again and come back next time and continue. Verse 10, Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in it, even as it is in heaven. I want you to think on that until we meet again next time. Shalom. Lunchtime just got better. Get Fed Delights brings you a taste of Africa. Located at the redeemed Christian Church of God compound, Lowlands, Tobago. Visit us every Friday for your authentic Nigerian cuisine, such as jollof rice, fried plantains, Nigerian stew beef, fish and chicken, pounded yam with igusi, moi moi, chin chin, pepper soup and so much more. Call us 752-3660 to place your order. Lunchtime just got better. Come and get fed. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefun, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m., on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God.